where is the best place to find your assignments on Google Classroom? Come along with me. We're going to take a look and find out our options. Hello there, everyone, and welcome back. We are in the middle of a video series all about Google Classroom. It's back to school time. We're taking a look at reviewing some of those skills that we need to know about. If you're new here, welcome. I'm glad you've been able to find us here. My name is Danielle Rochfort, and I am a grade seven and eight online teacher. Here on this channel, I like to create videos that help students, parents, as well as teachers when it comes to their online learning journey. Now, like I mentioned, today we're going to be taking a look at um, where we can find assignments on Google Classroom because there are a number of different places. It's not just one place where you can find your assignments. And each different place has its benefits, but sometimes its drawbacks as well. So why don't we hop into the computer here and we're gonna take a look at some of the options available to us. On our screen here, you can see our example student has a couple of classes available. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to start on the dashboard here. On the dashboard, you can see that there are a couple of options right here above the classroom carts. All right. And so I want to take a look at these because in these two places, you are able to find some assignments. Um, so let's go to this to do first. OK, so this is the to do list that is generated by Google Classroom. And it certainly does have its benefits because as you take a look, there's uh, different ways that you can um, take a look at the assignments. You can take a look at all of the classes that you're a part of and it can list all of those assignments. Um, you can look at specific classes and just look at the assignments that are coming up for those classes. All right. Um, you can also filter them by missing assignments. So assignments that uh, were previously due and you haven't done them yet. And you can also take a look at assignments that are already done and handed in. Okay, so this is a great way to access your assignments and be able to filter them out in different ways. Okay. Um, so that is definitely a benefit of it. Um, one drawback is um, that if there is no due date assigned to a particular assignment, um, sometimes it's easy to sort of uh, get lost in amongst all of the different um, assignments. OK, and I, Google Classroom tries its best to be able to outline everything for you. But I have known some students to sort of get lost um, in their to do list and not quite sure what the teacher wanted to have happen or even the order that things were supposed to happen. Um, the other drawback with your to do list is not all the posts that your teacher um, makes to Google Classroom necessarily shows up. So different assignment types will show up for you. But say, for example, your teacher posted some resources for you. So things that you were supposed to take a look at and go through before attempting an assignment. Well, that post would not show up on your to-do list and you would completely miss out on all of that information and probably be a little bit confused when it came to the assignment. So that's uh, certainly a, a drawback to that, okay? Now I'm gonna go back to the dashboard and we're gonna take a look at the calendar. This is actually really, really neat because visually it will show you the assignments that are due on certain days and you so you see you can take a look at the weekly outlook and see if there's anything uh, coming up that is due. Okay, now this is a great visual way to do things, but obviously one of the drawbacks here is if there's no due date associated with the assignment, um, then it won't show up here for you. Okay, so that's certainly a drawback for that as well. Um, another place 
where you can uh, find the uh, the assignments that you need um, is actually by going into the class. So we're going to open up one of the classes and by clicking on the classwork page. Hey, okay, when you click on the classwork page, this is a list of all of the assignments that your teacher has given. And that includes posts like resource posts. So something that might not necessarily be an assignment, but has important material for you. And I know uh, most teachers that uh, use Google Classroom will also post assignments and resources in the order that they want you to tackle things in. So it's, it's like an ordered to-do list for you right here on the Classwork page. So this is a fantastic way uh, to find all of your information and assignments and things like that. And I know for my students, um, I encourage them to go directly to the classwork page instead of relying on the to-do list. Because on the classwork page, they get to see every single thing that I want them to tackle, including the resources that I post for them. All right Now, there is another tab here that you will probably utilize throughout the, uh, the year, and that is the class stream. Now, the class stream is the page that you are first brought to when you open up a Google Classroom. Um, but generally, um, you won't find your assignments here. Now, sometimes some teachers will leave um, on the setting to allow different assignments to be posted on the class stream. So that is something that could potentially happen. But most teachers that I know will turn off that option so that things aren't as cluttered on the class stream. Because the function of the class stream is not so much about the assignments, because that's the function of the classwork page. Um, but this is more about communication. The class stream is about communication. Um, and depending on the settings that your teacher has chosen to use, um, sometimes you can uh, create posts. So if you notice here, I click on um, the, uh, the banner there and it allows me to type something. Um, here is a great announcement for the class. All right, and so I could type something out. You notice I can also format uh, my post if I would like to. You can add details to it, so files from your Google Drive. Um, you can upload a file, include a link, or maybe even um, a, a YouTube video. You can add those different items, and then you can post it. And when you post, everyone that's part of the class is able to see that. Now, sometimes teachers will not allow students to create their own posts, but you can respond to a post that a teacher creates. That's what I do for my classes. So in my classes on the stream, the class stream, I'm the only one that can make announcements, but students can reply to that so they can make comments. And that would be right here. So see where it says add a class comment. Um, you can type in here. Here is a response. There we go. And then I would add that to it. Okay. And there's a comment on the post. All right. Um, and so that is how you can use the class stream. The, the class stream is all about that communication portion. The class work page is where you find your assignments. And there we have it. It is as simple as that. Uh, places where we can find those details. All right, moving forward in our next video, we're gonna be talking about the notifications that come along with assignments, um, comments, um, even uh, feedback that you get from your teacher and things like that and how to control some of those notifications. So stick around, check out the next video when it's posted, and hopefully we'll see you there.